Hi guys. Today we're starting our last new section of chapter eight, which is section 8-6, and it's solving rational equations. So everything we've done so far has been simplifying rational expressions. So we're taking adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, and we're making it as small as possible, but it's still like a math problem, um, still a fraction usually. Um, but today I'm going to put an equal sign into the original problem. We've never done that uh, yet in this chapter. Um, and then since there's gonna be an equal sign in the original problem, we will be solving for X. So we're trying, what does X equal? So our final answer is gonna be like X equals five or X equals one half or something like that. Today we're gonna, uh, focus on simple proportions. So a proportion, if you don't remember, is a fraction that's equal to another fraction, but there's only one fraction on each side of the equal sign. Uh, it's not like a fraction plus a fraction equals a third fraction. We'll, we'll put that off till tomorrow. Uh, so today, simple proportions. Um, and so when you have a proportion, you're going to do the process of cross multiplying. Now, before we cross multiply, uh, we have, you know, variables in our denominator, and as we've been doing with all the other problems, we should write restrictions. So the restriction for this problem is x cannot equal negative 3. Now that's going to become important at the very end of the question, so we'll have to come back and check with it later. All right, now I want to cross multiply, but, you know, the right side's not written as a fraction. So let's make it one. Anything in the world can be written as a fraction. You just put a one underneath it. So five over one. When you're doing cross multiplying, you start at the bottom of one fraction and you go diagonally through the equal sign and you multiply it by the top of the other fraction. You take the bottom of this fraction, you go diagonally through the equal sign, multiply it by the top of that fraction. When you cross multiply, there will be no more fractions in the problem but there should still be an equal sign. So the one is gonna travel up to the four, and the x plus three is gonna travel up to the five, and the equal sign will still be in the middle, but there will not be any more denominators because the denominators travel up. They travel up the arrows, okay? So make sure it's not a fraction anymore. You still got your equal sign. And then we solve. I mean, you guys can solve this, right? I got a negative 11 over 5. All right. So the last thing you should do before you put a box around this and say, this is my answer, um, is you should check and see, you know, we had a restriction. We had a number that X could not equal. So when you're done with the problem, check and see, is the number that I got for my answer, is X allowed to equal that? Or is it a restriction? Now, in this problem, uh, we're fine, right? My restriction was x cannot equal negative 3. I did not say it does equal negative 3. So we're good, and I feel pretty confident putting a box around this and saying this is my final answer. But there will be some times where you get a final answer, and your final answer is also a restriction. So it's not really a final answer. Remember that we called those um, extraneous solutions. An extraneous solution is something that you think is an answer to the problem, but then you find out it actually isn't. So just be on the lookout for this. Okay, guys, I think this concept is pretty basic compared to the things that we've been doing. So I'm going to go ahead and let you try a couple on your own. Check for your restrictions so that you can see if there are any extraneous solutions. And then when you're done, come on back and uh, check and see how you did. All right, so on number one, first of all, number one does not have any variables in the denominator. So number one does not have any restrictions. So we totally don't even have to worry about that on question number one, there are no restrictions. And my final answer that I got for question one was negative two. Now question number two is a little bit trickier. Um, question number two does have restrictions, negative three and negative five. And then in the process of solving question number two, you created an x squared. So I hope you remember that any time that you have an x squared in an equation, you should set the equation equal to zero and factor. And since we factored, we got two answers. So my answers for number two are negative four and three. 
And I just want to point out, we almost had an extraneous solution. X cannot equal negative three. But luckily, we got positive three. So we're good. We're, we're fine. Negative four and positive three are my final answers. If you need to see the work for the second one, I did do it on my whiteboard. So here that is for you. You can pause the video if you need to look at it. And that concludes today's only video.